Hello and welcome to Learning and Technology. My name is Frank and I'm glad that you're here. This video is in response to a subscriber question in the comments section. So if you're not a subscriber, why not subscribe now? If this video is useful to you, go ahead and hit the like button and share it with any colleagues that you think might benefit from it. So what did the subscriber ask? Well, this particular individual has a program that ends with a capstone project. And as part of that capstone project, what they need to do is meet with individuals to get status updates on the project and to also book the time that they're going to present their project. So the question is, how do we give the time slots that are available to the students, let them choose one of the time slots, and then make it not available to the remaining students? Now, we could do this a number of ways. One is I could open up my schedule to the students. They could request a meeting with me. I could then accept that meeting and then that would allocate that time slot and then other students would see that it's been booked. That's a little cumbersome. It requires me to open up my calendar to the students and it also requires me to accept meetings and then book that time. And there is a potential that students might request the time at the same time someone else requests the time and it can just become a bit of a nightmare. The other option I have is I could say, hey, here's a poll. Here's five available times. Which one do you prefer? And then they could click on the poll. And then once their selection was made, the other students would have to choose a different time. Now, this isn't as easy as it seems because a lot of polling software allows for multiple selections for each choice. It doesn't limit it to only one person can select one choice. Uh, certainly within the free versions that I was looking at, that wasn't an option. There may be some availability in more paid versions. So then the other option is I could have an Excel spreadsheet and students could simply go into the Excel spreadsheet, see the times that were available and book it. And that's not a bad way of doing things, having a shared document where students can go in, have edit capability. You could do that through Excel. You could do that through a class notebook. But there's a really simple way to do this that looks good and is very easy to communicate to students. And that's by using Microsoft Lists. What we'll do is we'll create a list of available times that I have for the presentations or for the consultations that I'm going to do. And then I will fill in the time and the students will go in and they'll be able to select that time and put their name next to it. It's really quite simple to do. It looks good. It's easy to communicate to the students and it's effective. Let's go have a look at that. I'm here in Teams and my objective here is to present the students with an option to select a time that they can meet with me in order to review their capstone project. So I've created a channel here called Capstone Time Slot and what I want to do is I could have them request a, and schedule a meeting with me. The challenge with that is that if I open up my calendar to students then they can choose any time that I'm not currently booked. So that becomes a bit of an issue because they may book a time that I don't want them to. The other option is that I could do a survey. And the challenge with a survey is that I may have different students select the same option. And so then the third thing I could say is, okay, make, is there a way of doing a survey where people can only select one option and once that option selected, nobody else can select it. And there are some paid tools that will allow me to do that. But what I want to do is just make this very simple. So underneath the capstone time slot, what I'm going to do is go into add and I'm going to add in Microsoft lists. And what I'm going to do in Microsoft lists, I'll go and save this is I'm going to put in the list here and I'm going to create a new list. And if I've already created this survey, I could add an existing list, but I'm going to create a new list and there isn't really a template here that I want to use. So I'm going to go in and create a blank list and I'm going to call this choose a time to meet with me and uh, uh, choose a time to meet and review your capstone. So we're going to choose a time to meet and review and I can put a, a description here capstone review select a time and then we can choose a color for it and we'll go here and we'll make it a calendar right so I'll go into create now when I create this you'll see choose a time to meet with me becomes an option on that channel and now what I want to do is I want to go in and I'm going to add columns in here so the first column I'm going to add in here is going to be a date and time column. And so I'm going to call this time slot. Okay. And I'll say time to 
meet. And underneath here, what I'll do is I'll include a time in here. So it'll be a date and a time. And then I won't put in a default value. I'll go ahead and save that. And that just puts in a time slot column. Then I'm going to add a column in here, which will be whether it's booked or not. So this will be a yes, no. So it'll be a yes, no. And I'll say, is this time available? Or would you like to book this time? Would you like to book this time? And then if yes, then the time is booked. In fact, you know what, for this column, I think I'll just put the, is it booked question mark? And if it's a yes, then the time is booked. So is, is it booked? Yes. And it's a yes, no. And the default value is that my time will be available. So it's going to be a no. And then I'm going to add another column in here, and this will be a person. And who has booked this time? And it'll just be who has booked this time. So actually, I'll take this here, and we'll put that as the description. And we'll do booked by. So we know who's booked it. And then we'll save that. So now I have a title. Time slot, booked, booked by, and add, I can add more columns. But underneath this, I'm going to go and edit this, and I'm going to put in my meetings. So I'll have, uh, say, oh, meeting time one. And we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll just copy this to make it easier for me. So meeting time one, and we'll paste that in. And we'll make this meeting time number two. And we'll paste this in and make it number three. And we'll, I'll just do four for now. So I have four different slots that I want to make available for the students. And students can come in and they can book whatever time works for them. And I make it a little bit bigger. So I have meeting time one, two, three, and four. And meeting time number one, underneath the time slot, if I go in here, I'm going to have my meeting starting on the 14th. And my first meeting will be at 9 a.m. And then I'll go in, my next meeting will be on the 14th, and the next available time there is 10 a.m. And if somebody wants to meet with me, they can be on the 14th. 14th is going to be capstone day. They meet 11 a.m., and so on and so forth. So on the 14th, and we'll make that p.m. at noon. So I can also make that a little bigger. And then whether it's booked or not, I'm not going to fill that in yet. And who's booked it, I'm not going to fill that in either. So now I can exit the quick edit. And now I've got this meeting time and people can come in. You can see currently that they're not booked and then people can come in and they can book it. So now what will happen is if I go to another computer, so I'm going to go to another computer and let's say I have a student who comes in and they're going to see this in their capstone time slot. So they can choose a time to meet with me so they can be moving around and have a good time underneath here time, choose a time to meet with me. And if they come in and choose a time to meet with me, so I'll grab that. And let's say they go in there and I'm just on another computer here and they're seeing this view where it's, it says choose a time to meet with me and they're going to choose time number three. So all they're going to do is they're going to open up the form and you're not seeing this because really all they're going to do is they're going to go in and I'll show you on the other computer, but they're going to book that time and they're going to put in their name. And I'll show you this in a moment on this computer so you can see what they're seeing. And they're going to book it. But what I want to show you there is how when they go in and book it, it's automatically going to fill that in. So all you saw was that Bruce Wayne has booked it. Now, what did Bruce see? Well, Bruce now sees that that time's booked. So, oh, I want, so I'm in as me. So I'm going to book my own time. So if I open up this form here, right, I'm going to say, okay, I want that time slot. It's not currently booked. I'm going to book it and I'm going to put in my name. So I'll put myself in there and now I've booked it. And if I go back to the list, you can see that time's booked by me. So this is a great way to just very quickly have a list where people can go in. They can see what's currently available, whether it's booked, whether it is uh, already booked and who's already booked it. There's one way that we can have students go in, modify a list, check out time slots in the same way that they would check out a piece of equipment or in the same way that they would uh, modify any type of inventory 
In this case, the inventory is my consultation blocks. The inventory is the presentation blocks for their final capstone. So they can go in and they can take that item out of inventory, change it from an available to a booked status. I hope that video was useful and that that's something you can make use of in your own classrooms. If this was a useful video, I do hope you'll hit the like button. And if you like tips like this, go ahead and subscribe. As you can see, if you comment down below, a lot of times that gives me ideas for videos and I'm always happy to try to help uh, teachers and students learn better and teach better. Thank you so much for watching. There's a few more videos on this channel you can watch and we'll see you in the next video.